Hello YouTube, this is ViewMonkeyFX with yet another After Effects tutorial. I know it's been quite a while, but there is one reason behind that. This will be a new era of tutorials, CS6 style. Um, I got the entire creative suite this time. Um, I, actually very cheaply, uh, $350 for the entire creative suite. Steal. Literally. No, I'm kidding, I didn't steal it. For all you know. Anyway, um... So you probably saw the intro at the beginning, and I'm just going to be showing you some of the cool new stuff they added in CS6 with the intro. Alright, so here we got the uh, After Effects project for the intro you saw. And you know, it looks very cool, got some of this light going on here. Um, this took quite a while to actually pull off, but I was very pleased with the results of this. You know, we got this reflection and this 3D extruded text. And it's all beveled and everything. I really love that ray trace stuff they added in with the CS6. It's very nice. Very nice work on Adobe's part. So anyway, let's just play this through so you can see it again. So yeah. Um, well, I'm just going to get started with this, but my computer takes forever to load this ray tracing stuff. So I'm just going to go through this bit by bit because I can't just recreate it that would take me probably a couple of hours <laughs> sorry guys um but anyway we'll just start off with this this one layer um I downloaded a picture of some clouds set it as my what was it called again environment layer and then everything all the reflections are based off of this layer I then created a new camera yeah, new camera. Uh, I would have it orbit around the text. Just change the position and a little bit rotation in there as well. Alright, so guys, sorry for the delay. Now we can go into the text over here. Um, you see there are two new options that CS6 adds. Geometry options and material options. Geometry options you can only see with Ray Trace 3D renderer which is very important to have ray traced if you want to do any beveling or extruding that After Effects adds in CS6. And then also material options, which just happens either way, classic 3D or ray trace 3D. So we go into the material options. You can see except lights is on, except shadows is on. Um, if we go into geometry options, you can see that we have extrusion depth set to 100, meaning that this text that we put down, 3D text, will be extruded and have depth. Now, you weren't able to do this with other versions of After Effects, and that's why I sort of like CS6. You can actually extrude your text without using shatter. Um, then they also added bevel to make it look more stylized, which I kind of like the look on this. You can see the edges on the S here is a very good example. That is. Um, basically the default settings except for bevel depth to convex bevel style and extrusion depth to 100 that's all you need. And then for material options there's one way I got this chrome look which I really like. Um, you have to set specular shininess almost all the way up that'll give it sort of that dark look and then reflection intensity set to 100 and um, in order to have it actually refre reflect you need the uh, environment layer which you can only get the environment layer with ray trace um, yeah then basically just add in lights wherever you would like and make sure that the lighting fits the scene like, if it's a dark background, don't have a ridiculously bright source of text that would cause people to go into a seizure, you know? Um, so yeah, I just have three lights, pretty soft lighting, and it looks pretty cool, but there's still some stuff that we can add to make it look even more... Um, not necessarily more realistic, but, well, maybe more realistic. I don't know. I've never seen anything like this actually done. 
But also, one last thing. To make it look more realistic, I blur out the background slightly, and I add curves. See here. And then it just looks a whole lot more realistic in my opinion. Then here I uh, have Comp 1, which I used this just basic Comp 1, then I blurred it slightly. You can see with the camera lens blur. Um, then you can see that we have these light streaks and all this light coming off the image. Here we have, here I'll just solo this layer. We have this, um, and I'll twirl down the opacity so you can see this. Opacity is only 35, but the transfer mode is set to add. I'll set to add. Um, we have the camera lens blur like we did back here. We have curves, and I'll just show you the curves for a second. It's pretty sharp curves. So, basically what it's saying is all the dark parts set it to almost black, and all the light parts set it to almost white. And then in the middle, it'll be sort of a bluish color like we see right here, around the white. And then I added a glow just to give it more of a... Um, it was a little sharp, so I added glow to sort of add a little bit more blur to it. And that's that part. Then you see we have streaks coming from either side, and I guess I could have also used star glow for that but I don't think it would have fit I don't think it would have fit my needs very well for what I was going to be doing with it um so basically yeah I added a fast blur set it to horizontal uh, moderate amount of blur not too much and then the opacity on this was 69 uh, other than that all the other settings were the same I'll solve this layer so you can see what it looks like yeah and then, if we just solo this layer, you can see we have all the vertical streaks. And that was basically how I did that part of it. The intro type thing? Uh, 3D zoom intro? Whatever you call it. But anyway, that's just a basic walkthrough. It's, um, if you want to attempt it, by all means do it. But be warned, this is rather simple to do, but it takes a lot of time to perfect, and uh, you need a lot of patience. So, alright guys, uh, thanks for watching this tutorial, and I'll see you next time.